broadly speaking, if you can find a toe, a heel, some way to like flick a hip or something to kind of like negate that force buildup, it lets you grab things a lot more gently. There's nothing wrong with operating through a full range of motion if you have like some stability to counter. But with jump moves, it's really important a lot of times to actually overshoot. Not only do you have greater muscle overlap, you have more like room for air. You have more shock to absorb that force. You're not just at the end of your wit, so. Oh yes. my god. We are back with another episode of Anatomy of the Climb. We are so lucky to be graced by the presence <laughs> of Dan Bell again, who is going to discuss a classic Yosemite problem, Midnight Lightning, with us out in Yosemite. We're going to do more of a kind of rapid fire style this time, going over a few different videos. So let's get into it. Let's see what we got. Seems like that's basically the same way that most people do the first move. You got this nice, like, kind of right rail foot. What do you think, though, about, like, right off the bat with the left foot wasn't really used a ton in that, like, very initial movement as she went for, through? For this setup or for the, this follow-up move here? For this move here. Yeah, like... so actually, I don't know if we got a little... But watch for all the other videos. Basically, everybody just sits in this sort of, like, parallel configuration here. Mm -hmm. But that means that to some extent you're you're just lie backing this and you're set up in almost like a classic barn door. You know? Exactly. I don't know if I got my little drawer going here. Uh -huh. Hi-yah! So everybody gets into this kind of lie back position here, but um, they for whatever reason stay parallel with the feet. To some mm -hmm. extent because almost every video does it this way, I have to acknowledge the fact that this might just be the natural way to do it. Yeah. But normally looking at it, it's like, this sort of part of her body is isolated. You know, you're not really mm -hmm. using the left too much. You're getting some opposition off the left hand, but as soon as you start generating for this move, it's not really contributing. Yeah. You know, so it's like you end up having this sort of substantial like barn door moment sort of around this axis, you know? Mm -hmm. And so anything that you can do to kind of sit your center of mass more along that line is gonna be sort of more beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, the things that sort of come to mind would either be to use like a moon kick with this foot to like keep momentum, man these are challenging, <laughs> to kind of keep momentum going uh, oh, you as you undo, oh, undo the kick. Or, okay. yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, I'd either use a moon kick so that you have sort of like a like dynamic element sort of pulling you against that hand as you move up. So mm -hmm. you have this this nice little sort of float move. Because typically when you do a dynamic move, it's like you want to move in a way that at least allows a dead point. Climbs that we mm -hmm. think of as thrutchy mm -hmm. are movement styles that are like necessarily off balance. Mm -hmm. um, and so the only essentially you accelerate over the course of the movement, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're like in a stable position and you have no way of maintaining that stability. So your your whole effort is just kind of like smashing into another hold yeah. and trying to like <laughs> rally enough strength to, to counteract the like acceleration and force that you've built yeah. over the course of that. Um, so broadly speaking, if you can find a toe, a heel, some way to like flick a hip or something to kind of like negate that force buildup, it lets you grab things a lot more gently. Yeah, so, so in this case, that makes sense because you see in the video, she as she starts to go up towards that hole, mm -hmm. um, her weight is going to, like that foot is going to start to fall exactly. backwards. And that happens almost yeah. like incidentally. You know, it's like you start moving and the foot starts to kind of fall out. So if you sort of fling it to the left, yeah. as it starts kind of coming back to the right, you so, have yeah. that sort of moment of sort of free fall. So the other alternative, um, again, that just kind of 
appears to me is just uh, flagging through at the foot on the other side. Yeah. So that does kind of the opposite thing. It just moves more of your center of mass in line with that sort of like a like hinge essentially, mm -hmm. um, so that there's a lot less opportunity for things to kind of rotate around it. Yeah. And you know, not to not to give too many options for one move, but if you get a chance to watch the Lynn Hill video, you can also match feet, bring up a right foot, and get a drop knee. Yeah, and I just I, keep I, it classy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going on this one. Yeah. So what I do really like about this video is like, one, she obviously has super strong fingers, and two, uh, she does all these moves with like a lot of conviction. You know, there's not a lot mm -hmm. of hesitation as he executes the moves. There's a fair amount of sort of like reversing and reevaluating. So I get the sense at least that this is maybe like an early effort on the climb. A lot of times when people find themselves in an awkward position, they just sort of jump off of the wall. Mm -hmm. um, I've certainly been known to do it. And it's uh, easy to kind of defend as efficient, just be like, oh, you know, I'll just try it again. But like, it's a real skill and sort of uh, uh, attribute to kind of keep fighting and kind of like innovating as you go. You know, she's tried yeah. like four different sequences and flows from one to the other really pretty smoothly. Did you notice that little? Yep, little yep, 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 there? absolutely. <laughs> Do you want to dive into that? Or? <laughs> yeah, so that look back is like really classic, you know, uh -huh. um, for one uh -huh. reason or another, a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of like hand sliding, possibly too few pads or, you know, all the pads on hand. Uh -huh. But. Um, it's pretty rare to see people do a move <laughs> after after the tutorial's look back. You yep. know, that's the uh, that's the questioning what you're doing there kind of look. The, the preparing for failure mm -hmm. rather than success. But that said, I, I really liked <laughs> after that. She still that goes she, for she it. still goes for it. She still goes for it like pretty convincingly. You know, yeah. um, it's maybe. I mean, I I can't imagine it was like a hundred percent effort. You know, it wouldn't yeah. have been for me. <laughs> but um, definitely. And then we can see she still goes for it. Yes. Yeah. Zoomed out all the way. Now we're zoomed out. And yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty but, great stuff yeah, from, overall, like, from Judith. Precise movement, um, yeah. good sort of like fight and conviction, and uh, does each of the moves with like a pretty high degree of confidence, it looks like, so. Yeah. Thank we'll you, see. Judith. <laughs> As a quick aside, uh, I really appreciated all of the positive feedback from the last video, and you guys actually sort of overwhelmed me with the requests that I got after we <laughs> threw out that coaching announcement. Um, Thank you very much. Major apologies to the handful of people that I unfortunately didn't get a chance to get back to. Um, I've streamlined my process since and got a nice wait list set up. Um, there will be a couple more spots opening up sort of around the end of the month, so end of July. Uh, feel free to reach out. At the very least, I can get you information and you get you set up on a wait list. July? End of Is July, yeah, yeah, sort of two to three weeks from now. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, yeah, psyched to work with all of you. Um, Bummed I can't take on an unlimited client list. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of flows. Yeah, hip Quick flexibility, bump. but also just like boom, 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 done. Yeah. Ooh, did a little hip into yep. a rotation. A little bit as of well. both, yeah, but she, she kind of flicked through it. So it was like a little yeah. bit of a little bit of a combo. She she uh, rotated the knee in, which kinda of like briefly like. tossed the hips across and almost like did it as a as a dead point into the left hand. Yeah, let's just I like just kinda of seeing that boom. a little slower as she yeah. goes in. And she stands right, square, square, Oop, boom, there it was. Yeah, yeah the, little, the little internal rotation, and then a little yeah. flick. A little combo. Yeah, looks great. And then just bump, bump. Oh, there it is. I like that, so that's almost yeah. as it. <laughs> Moving. Yeah, lots of fight with this one, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Whap. Now this is the one we, we wanted to talk about with um, that little like flaring out of the elbow mm -hmm. and some like possible reasons of it. You know, we can see like a few possible reasons. One, like the amount of tension she's putting in the foot to keep herself closer is rotating her body a little bit, which is gonna rotate her torso. But oftentimes when we hit like a, a hold like that and it's very like forearm dependent mm -hmm. and like it's gonna create a lot of movement, especially as we're falling backwards, the body wants to like pull in and it's oftentimes creates a lot of internal rotation. So that's, you know, the lats are engaging really hard, the pec major yeah. is engaging really hard. So that creates internal rotation at the shoulder. And if the external rotators and the scapular retractors aren't engaged well, then that's gonna like allow that elbow to flare out really far. And my understanding, I mean, this is definitely uh, a good spot for you to weigh in as a PT, but I, I think that sort of like overhead rotation and anterior shift is like certainly a risk factor for damage to soft tissue. It's not like it will necessarily happen. It's not even necessarily like a chronic thing, but I think it certainly exposes some of those like ligaments and sort of the uh, uh, 
the labrum? Absolutely the labrum too, because what will, and this, this is seen in a lot of overhead athletes, mm -hmm. is when there's a lot of forced internal rotation without balance of the external rotators, it actually causes the humerus to shift forward, which can cause some tearing of the labrum and can also tear some of the glenohumeral ligaments that would stabilize in that position. So that can create like instability in the shoulder and start to damage the labrum. So yeah, it's not like an instant thing that can happen, but that particular motion over time where you have too much strength in those internal mm -hmm. rotators not balanced by the external has been shown to to create labral issues and even like long head of the bicep issues over yeah. time. And it occurs to me that you see this a lot in, in climbers who are already like not necessarily actually hypermobile, but it frequently happens to people who are fairly flexible overhead, so they yeah. might be even more prone to some of these things. Absolutely. Anyways, just something to keep an eye out on. Little training tip for that obviously is just you know, you can practice those actual movements and like record yourself when you're doing them. If you're doing that kind of dynamic movement, start with a smaller dynamic movement and, you know, engage those muscles, see what it feels like, and then work on the more powerful movements and try and learn that engagement. Or also just try and strengthen those external rotators or even do those like face pulls with the overhead press so mm -hmm. you can start to teach your body that strength through yeah. that motion. So just a nice little tip for that position. But still, great job, you held on to it, you, you cruise in. I, I just still love the tension in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, the amount of focus to be able to do those moves while also like thinking about driving that foot down is great. Yeah. She rolls through here, and then we talked about, you know, maybe she has a lot of internal rotation. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, there it is, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah, she's got lots of internal rotation of that shoulder. She's She comes through so far for this press. Um, yeah. it's, it's kind of impressive. Um, it's, it's well utilized, you know, as long as she hasn't had shoulder injuries. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, I don't like to it's say- It's safe until it isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't like to say to people, oh, don't do this, you know, that's too much mobility. It's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with operating through a full range of motion if you have like some stability to counter. If you're just, you know, a literal Gumby and you just flop around and have no strength to counter, that's when you're really at risk. If you work through and train these, these antagonistic muscles mm -hmm. to help stabilize in those positions, you're a lot safer. So, yeah. And a quick, quick note on that that may or may not make it into the video, but um, a lot of people who are pretty strong sort of take for granted being pretty strong, but you're not always equally strong in some of these sort of end range or unusual positions. And so that's something that's a little bit unique in climbing versus other sports is that, say like gymnastics or track or whatever, you tend to train in the positions that you perform in. And so you have sort of a career worth of uh, sort of increasing exposure to these different positions. But climbing, having such a diversity of movements, you build a lot of strength outside of the regime that you end up performing in. And so when you do unusual moves like this, it's worth, you don't want to ever be like afraid particularly, and you don't want to be inhibited from trying, but you should be aware when you're in a move that you don't do that often, that in a way you're at higher risk of injury just because you haven't really adapted to that specific movement pattern. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, it just is, is worth bearing in mind. Uh, if you know that you have something extreme coming up like that, it's worth trying to find some easier exemplars to kind of either prepare yourself or at least like acclimate to somewhat. I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard to say that like, you know, three gym sessions is gonna make a big difference before a trip, but you know, Pay attention if things feel weird, especially in unusual positions, it's worth kind of taking note. That's, and that goes along very well with, you know, a, a rule I talk about is set a, an attempt limit. If you know, mm -hmm. like Jan just pointed out, that it's a really awkward position or movement for you, don't allow yourself to try it 30 times. The first three times may be perfectly fine for your body, but what do you expect if you go into this super awkward position? Fatigued. Fatigued, you repeatedly do it, something bad is gonna happen, so. Just, you know, be smart about the movement. Set yourself a limit on attempts if you know it's an awkward position. And that doesn't mean you can't, like, come back in a future day. Just set a limit for maybe that session. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. And then the nice press immediately over under the leg. Good flexibility. Good to go. I don't know. It's pretty nice Yeah, that's good. Great job. <laughs> Great job. Good footwork. We're proud of you. 
So we'll start us off here. Damn. Nice, easy work right off the bat. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> and he does that one differently. He keeps the external rotation, but it almost mm -hmm. looks like he just creates a small little press with the... Yeah, he sort of just arcs his back. This is kind of like the, yeah. um, the range of motion alternative that we talked about. The knees out, but the hips still go across yeah. via a little bit of like back arc. Yeah. And probably like really strong in that yeah. right hand. He as also well. just doesn't even bother to go into that in cut little uh, little ear thing. He just smashes the side pull. So <laughs> <laughs> no notes. Well done. <laughs> and then oh, interesting. So that's kind of cool. So he steps in. That's like a relatively big block foot, and it gives mm -hmm. you good opposition against that crimp. But it's a little bit different than what we've been seeing. I think yeah. this approach is perhaps a little bit more powerful. Correct. Um, it doesn't require you to rock across this poor little foot. So yeah. in some ways, it maybe ends up being almost a little bit easier. But something that I noticed actually is like this this left foot step up is awesome. Little little like mini coordination move. So watch One. like as he kinda like frogger boosts up here, he resets his left foot to oppose Ooh, the swing yeah. and keep a little tension. So that it only great. stays for a little bit, but it like clearly reduces the swing and sets him up in a good position between those holds. Yeah, so let's let's kinda highlight this for him so you can see that real quick. So we're gonna see it right coming in through here. Yep. As it, boom, you can see it just immediately, like it just kind of hits the wall. Stays, stays, yeah. stays, 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 These are really stays, nice, stays, like, stays. And yeah, then, almost and keeps then the foot on that, like, just nothing smear. But this actually is, is a key point. Pause it real quick, if you could. Um, something that I don't think comes up a ton, but this is another rule of thumb. There are no real true hard and fast rules of climbing, but this is very often the case. People try with dead points and jumps to be as accurate as they can. You know, they try to really hit things like cleanly and at extension and try to, you know, minimum minimum effort kind of movements. But with jump moves, it's really important a lot of times to actually overshoot. You don't want to overshoot with your hand. You want that to be like as precise as possible so you get these sort of like nice, gentle, clean contacts. But you want to overshoot with your body. Notice how his elbow's bent here. Um, being able to jump high enough that your scaps is, are bent, your elbow's down and you get into a little bit of this sort of like hollow, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to call it. A little bit of a hollow position. Um, it lets you kind of squeeze your elbows together. It lets you engage. It lets you get into this frontal plane, and it gives you both a lot of kind of compression and control between the holds. It gives you some room in the elbow to have sort of an eccentric moment to uh, uh, control the load as you catch it. Um, but the other thing that's a little bit more subtle is a lot of times it turns you, it either turns you away from the wall a little bit or it simply makes you thicker. If you think of it as sort of like uh, the hinge and sort of, again, a, a barn door type thing, if you hit something really at extension, you're very thin. And so you have the least ability to counteract the, the sort of torque and rotation that comes through the swing from the movement. So essentially your, your hips and your legs are swinging out. Um, and you have this whole long lever arm. It's basically the entire length of your body from, from fingertips where you're grabbing to feet where they're swinging. Um, and to fight that, you have essentially just the width of your chest, you know? So it's sort of like a factor of 10, you know, six inches to 60 inches kind of. Um, and so if you can rotate in against the wall or you can kind of like hollow out and, and compress a little bit, you can increase your effective like hinge width by, you know, a factor of four or five and make life just a lot easier on yourself. Um, TLDR on that, try to jump into a bent elbow. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I absolutely agree with everything you said, and just to highlight that point is, it is about having you know room to maneuver, room to live. Like when mm -hmm. you hit it fully extended, yeah. your ability to extend further is very limited. Yeah. You hit it, I mean also think about, have you ever tried like a one arm pull up or something? Where are you the strongest? Kind of that mid-range. Kind of that mid-range. Mm -hmm. Where are you the weakest? Yep. <laughs> so if you can hit it with that little bend, not only do you have greater muscle overlap, so your muscles are in a better position to be able to handle that load and the force, but as Dan like, you know, very accurately pointed out, you have more like room for air. You have more shock to absorb that force. You're not just at the end of your wit. So great point. And control, get the foot on. A little bit of elbow flare like the a other little. one, but not nearly as much. Yeah. This uh, this match of the lightning bolt's a little more classic. And maybe that is, like you're saying, maybe it's just because that hold, it's just the style of the hold makes you want to like mm -hmm. be able to down pull on it a little more. I mean, we're seeing that, you know, a yeah. few times here. Before Sometimes a little bit of trunk rotation gets you around that. You know, when you're, when yeah. you're square, you're kind of like engaging like this, but if you rotate just a little bit, it naturally yeah. kind of drops in. But. And then we'll watch the rest. I like that flag. Yeah. Just look how casual. Look at that chalk up. So yeah, nice. Pal. Just casual, comfortable. <laughs> Good, comfortable position, loading yeah. the foot and the hand. 
And he tried something slightly different. He's like, I have oh. seen some people do this. I, yeah. I think that um, when this was being first climbed, kind of back in the that. 70s or whatever, there was sort of lichen up there. And so people um. had brushed what they presumed was the, the sort of hold sequence. Um, yeah, it made it look super good. Also, just overall note, if this is the red point burn, I am really impressed with the kind of smoothness of climbing. This looks like the kind of thing that's maybe not like thoroughly dialed, but it looks like yeah. something that's on somebody's circuit, you know? So right. if he managed to make it look like that on his Sengo, it's like it's a testament to his climbing. <laughs> yeah, it's really well done. Let's see, just one more time as he kind of pulls through. Yeah. And then that's what I also liked because you can tell he's really balanced like with mm -hmm. the, the right foot and the left hand to let him kind of, he casually grabs up through there, but yeah. then he almost doesn't have the length to do it. It looks yeah. like he kind of stops. It's hard to get past that 90 in the shoulder. It changes yeah. over into kind of like triceps and like a very different kind of press. Yeah, he starts to like, you can, that's mm -hmm. that, that angle he talked about and yeah. he's, he's shorting himself and he, uh, Yeah, <laughs> also like fairly minor and it's, Ooh. it's, harder than it looks because it's a bit of a bowl there. Mm -hmm. But um, he probably could have gotten away with driving that right knee a little bit further to the right for the bump move. Exactly. Um, in a way, he was set perfectly for his initial positioning. But then when he had to bump a little further, it all came out of the, the sort of shoulder and elbow, which put him a little off balance. Not much, but. Yeah, so you, you could see when he was reaching up for it, like you said, he was in a great position, but I agree, if, if he had allowed himself mm -hmm. to rock more over, he would have been in a much better position. To some extent, you can kind of see that by the way that the knee falls to the left when, mm -hmm. he, when he disengages, you know? Because he's already like in that, he's already leaning yeah. that way, he's not centered over it. So let's yeah. see that again real quick. That's Not that it's always possible, but yeah. broadly speaking, if you're in balance for a move, nothing is going to fall out of position when you do the move. Absolutely. So you see he tries a little bit, but then the moment he kind of lets it go, because he's just pulling. Mm -hmm. He's pulling with his right hand right now, not yeah. with the right foot as much. And you can tell because the moment you, you said he lets go, and then boom, knee falls back in until he latches the hold. So he was absolutely pulling himself over with that hand, not the, the yeah. foot to get yeah. centered. Which again, not necessarily wrong. It's just yeah. always like where you can where you can find a little extra, you know? I mean, maybe he wanted to do it just to add a little spice to the end of the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it looked now. like the spotter wasn't really paying as much attention as they could, so. <laughs> he just wants to test him, just give him a little yeah. mini heart attack. Also, we've you know? talked about it none, but look at this like little lichen slab top. That out. looks Full beautiful. value. We're gonna like, leave it as mystery for people to experience it themselves, but. <laughs> Well, and thanks again to, to Dan for being here with his honestly just amazing feedback and, and information as well. And what did you guys like about this different format? It's obviously a little different than the way you've done it in the past. It's definitely going to be a little bit longer. Write a comment below and let us know. Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um... Like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. Damn, dude. So lit. I thought it was pretty good. <sighs> <laughs>